Okay, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. A very warm welcome to the British Council. I'd like to get proceedings underway then by inviting Sarah Deverell, who is uh, Director Exams for Southeast Asia here at the British Council, to give a welcome and make the opening remarks. Sarah. We are here, gathered here, to have a panel discussion on quality standards in English language education. Quality insurance is a key element in the process of improving the national education system. Improving quality at the institutional level will need setting up appropriate standards of performance and the creation of conditions that are required to help learners realize these standards. The areas where appropriate standards could be applied are including improving learner, learning achievement, improving the quality and relevance of the curriculum, improving the learning environment, integrating information and communication technologies, increasing the number of professionally competent teachers, increasing continuing professional development opportunities for teachers, improving learning assessment, and also improving school leadership. Today's panel discussion is an open debate about how quality assurance might contribute to setting standards in these areas in English language education. So the key questions for this evening are, what kind of attributes does a quality provider of English language education have? How do you measure, how do you monitor quality in English language education? Is quality assurance in English language education more important in the private sector than the public sector? The impact of new technologies on educational quality the role of examinations in promoting quality. Good evening, everybody. My name's John Nagg, and I have the great honor uh, on my, only my second ever visit to India to be chairing this panel. With some trepidation, as obviously we have not only a panel, but a room full of experts on this subject. Um, I'm gonna start out by introducing the panel. Um, Starting from the left, we have William Bickerdyke, who's um, Regional Manager for South Asia for Cambridge International Examinations. We have Dr. Sadna Parasha, who is the Director for the CBSE, the Central Board of Secondary Education, uh, with responsibility for academics, research, training, and innovation. We have Isabel Sutcliffe, who's Director for International Quali Standards and Quality at Pearson Qualifications International. Have Ashok Pandey, who is Principal of the Alcon International School. And finally, on my right, your left, Keith Morrow, who is Senior Inspector of Accreditation UK, which is the British Council-run um, quality assurance program for English language providers um, in the United Kingdom. I'm going to hand over um, to our first speaker, who's Ashok Pandey, who's the principal of Aklon College. He's going to talk to us about what kind of attributes does a quality provider of English language education have. As a teacher or as a provider of the English language teaching, uh, what are our obligations? And those obligations are namely that we have to have a pedagogy of promise, hope, and inspiration. We have to respond to the diverse ways and to address the needs of the students in the context of their diverse learning styles. I'm going to uh, pass the microphone to Keith Morrow um, to talk about um, how do you measure and how do you monitor quality in English language education? Keith. My feeling is that quality and how you measure quality is actually common across the sector that I work in and has a lot to say about more general sectors and a more general application. So on that basis, let me tell you a little bit about how we uh, assess and evaluate quality within the Accreditation UK standard, uh, uh, the Accreditation UK scheme. 
Essentially, the scheme is built around a set of standards. It looks at management, it looks at the resources and the premises of a school, it looks at teaching and learning, it looks at the welfare of students. Two inspectors will go along to a school and spend a day, sometimes two days, in the school looking at the work of the school against the standards. So the standards are at the heart of this. Uh, I think Keith's uh, presentation on a criterion referenced kind of framework to ensure quality appears to be more of a top-down approach. But when we look at quality, it uh, should have stakeholders uh, right through the system. So what would be the bottom-up approach when we look at quality mattering to the people concerned? Absolutely. I think that's something we've definitely got to come back to. We have the honor of having uh, Dr. Sadna Prasha here. Thank you, John, and good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I'm quite delighted to be here this evening. After two and a half decades, the CBSE is now uh, partnered with Trinity, and we have uh, piloted the assessment of speaking and listening at the public school level, uh, at the public exam, and this will be our first year which is again looking at standards which are mapped to the CFR. So the pilot was done with 25,000 students across schools. Uh, and course quality assurance in that case is also important. There is a difference, as in the government school spoken school skills were not as good as the public schools, if you are to say so. However, I think we need to have a time frame within which that gap can be bridged so that there will be a standardization. And only after that standardization happens can we look into a qualitative improvement. It's very difficult to look at uh, schools and language education, English language education, without the context of quality assurance. So we have uh, in the quality school quality assessment and accreditation process not four but seven domains. and. Four of them are similar to what uh, Keith said a little while back. There are two more, and one of them focuses on beneficiary satisfaction. We're now going to move on to Isabel Sutcliffe from Pearson, who's going to tell us about the impact of new technologies on educational quality. Technology is only as good as the professional practitioner um, who's using it. I strongly believe that technology is uh, excellent for fostering continuous professional development of our teachers. If the teacher themselves do not uh, inculcate that in their own learnings and use that as a part and parcel of their life, then it becomes technology is you know, a hindrance or seems to be very much enforced if the school or the environment is talking about using technology in the classroom. But at this point, I'm going to hand over to our uh, fifth and final panelist, William Bickerdyke from uh, Cambridge International Exams. My contention is that, the, of course, there's a very strong link between assessment, teaching and learning, and that assessment has a huge potential to improve the teaching and learning process. In English language teaching, uh, they are interviewed, so their speaking skills and various aspects of their sk speaking skills are all assessed. And by having such a wide range of forms of assessment, uh, this is obviously going to result in positive washback in, in terms of classroom practice. Uh, so the variety in the assessment itself will be reflected in variety in the classroom. I'd love to come back to the audience, but we're not going to have any time. We've only got two or three minutes left. I'll, I'll, I'll let Keith, you haven't had a, a general comment, so if you'd like to make a comment on what's on your top of your mind at the moment? Uh, yeah, what, what's top of my mind at the moment is, is actually going back to a topic which has been mentioned several times, this top up, bottom down. And I, I was just checking the slide behind me. We're talking about quality. I would like to just, it's, it's dawning on me that an area that would be interesting to explore is the difference between quality assurance and quality assessment. And in other words, looking at quality in terms of process, and that seems to me essentially a, a, a bottom-up uh, approach, which needs to be embedded within a school. 
And the gentleman here used, quoted Aristotle saying excellence is a habit. Well, developing that habit at school level within a specific institution has to be to some extent the responsibility of that institution and to some extent working towards their own ideas of what excellence or what quality is. I'd like to say a big thank you to our panelists. We've had a fantastic coverage and preventative experience. So a round of applause, thank you very much. What I would like to do now, having thanked the, uh, the panel for their contributions, is to invite Chris Brandwood um, to the stage, who is um, Director English Southeast Asia. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you again to everybody here. It's going to be the learners leading the teachers. How is that going to fit into the quality assurance scheme? I think this is a very interesting area. But there are so many things to think about. We are very pleased as a cultural relations organization to bring people together. We have an English uh, language quality standards program. There'll be much more to follow. So we hope to work with you, all of you, our partners in India, whether we're working in the primary, secondary, higher education, skills sector, it's a pleasure to be working with colleagues here and a great pleasure to be able to bring other colleagues from the UK and sometimes other countries too together for events like this and to work together.